What's going on, everybody? Zach Rosenblatt here with Mike K. Our first midweek podcast in a couple weeks because the schedule has been a little weird. But we're back at the Novacare Complex. Uh, a few things to talk about. It's actually been a pretty low key week considering it's a high key game coming on Sunday. Um, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, before we get into it, of course, I have to tell you guys again sign up for our Eagles Extra. You can get direct text messages from us about things that are happening with the Eagles, some exclusives we find out, things we see in the locker room. It's only four ninety nine a month, free for two weeks. It's on our website. It's on our Twitter. Go and find it. Sign up, and we will answer any questions you have on future podcasts. But <clears throat> we're having a good time with that. So again, make sure you sign up. But let so let's get into some Eagle stuff. Um, Are you sure, Zach? Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know if you said ready enough. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you I need to calm down. I, look, there's a Red Bull in front of me. I haven't had it yet, so I'm I'm not really hyped. I'm just maybe you just keep that unopened. You know? yeah, well, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's get into it. What do you got? So, I mean, the newsiest thing right now has been kind of the strange Camus Grugier Hill situation. Uh, I think we talked about it last week. How Camus admitted to lying about his concussion from the Dolphins game, right? Yep, week 13. Uh, and then when the concussion got worse, he told the team, and then he so he missed the Giants game on Monday night, and then Doug came out in his press conference uh, last week and said how selfish he was for doing that and how disappointed he was in Camus for doing that, and then you get to Sunday, and Camus only plays five snaps, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then earlier this week, Doug Peterson and Jim Schwartz both denied that it was disciplinary. And then, coincidentally, today, the Eagles put Camus Grugier-Hill on injured reserve, ending his season. Uh, according to their statement, they said he came to them with a back, something with his back was bothering him after he, the he, game he, on Sunday. He complained of discomfort. Yeah. Uh, he went to see, speak to their spine surgeon. They decided after an MRI to get a, get surgery. That was the gist of, of the statement. Then I got um, a statement sent to me by Steve Carrick, his agent, um, shortly after that statement went out, and it, it reads as follows, quote, Camus has been playing through significant pain for the majority of the 2019 season. This pain has forced him to take weekly pregame pain-killing shots and IV drips. This past week, the pain became unbearable, and it was determined he required a minor and minimally invasive back procedure to relieve the pain. He is expected to be fully recovered in three to four weeks. Camus is the ultimate team player who has given everything he has to this organization the past four years, end quote. So, a few th- I mean, there's a few ways to think about this. I would say that statement does not sound like someone who's particularly happy with the way this whole situation was handled, uh, whether that's from the way the Eagles' is me- messaging was. I mean, you would have better knowledge just from uh, Talk News agent, but Camus is going to be a free agent this offseason, and as you see here right now, are you less confident that he's going to be back than when we talked about this in midseason? Because <laughs> we, we both thought they would resign him. I think it's highly unlikely, yeah. yes. Uh, and it's been, the, I, I think, even before all this situation kind of happened, I think it's kind of been trending in that way. You know, he injured, um, he was injured, he injured his knee in training camp. Just all of training camp, yeah. He was having probably the best training camp of any defensive player. Well, uh, yeah, one of the, probably one of the better defensive players. Well, he hurt his knee early in training camp. Right, but he was having a, OTAs, he was crushing it, yeah. and then he Yeah, had, he looked good. Yeah. He had a pretty good first week of training camp. Until the injury occurred. Um, they were expecting him to be the other linebacker, starting linebacker. With with Hicks gone, yeah. Yeah, with Hicks gone. Um, that didn't work out when he returned. Nate Gary seemed to be getting a lot more snaps than him. Uh, Zach Brown got released, and it only seemed like Camus kind of... Yeah, he, was the, he was the third one instead of the second one. Right. So, um, you know, he's been a two-year two, two year special teams captain, uh, really well-liked in the locker room. I think part of this is on him. You know, uh, I you brought up the the lying about the concussion. That's yeah. a serious issue. A guy could die on the field, and no one. Would, let's say that did happen. God forbid somebody dies on Worst the field. Worst case scenario. Yeah. Worst case scenario. No one would know that it was that his he lied fault. about it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that that's something that needs to be kind of looked at in this. Look, I that statement by Steve is is. Eye opening, right? Yeah. But I also think you have to look at it from the Eagles' point of view too. In that, I mean, that's a scary situation, and it brings up a, another argument about the concussion protocol, about how you can how easy of, it is to fake it or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, and then there's guys that don't have those effects initially, 
So maybe they can lie that they, you know, you know what I mean? Maybe like, they're, oh, I'm fine. I don't need to do well, that. Sterling yeah. Shepard's a perfect example. Not saying he lied, but he didn't feel the the after effects. Real, right? Wasn't well, well, no. So he suffered the concussion, and then they cleared him to come back, and then he started feeling it again, and then he was uncleared. It, concussions are so hard yeah. to predict because exactly. you're not like that could happen. Like you're you literally not inside the guy's head, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Um, I think that brings up another um, issue in the concussion protocol, one that I don't think is an easy fix. Now, let's say that the, the Redskins benching, quote unquote, uh, was punishment for that. I think that's deserved. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Steve and Camus don't feel that way, but frankly, Camus hadn't played all that well. Yeah, uh, I mean, season. if you look at his number, he only had like 20-something tackles and one turnover this year. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm still dying. Yeah, sorry. Like this is like never ending cold. My 11 month old. He's today actually, he's actually only sick when he records the podcast. All, it's all true. Other days he's healthy. It's <laughs> true. Um, you know, I, I think that when we look at this situation, Camus is a starting linebacker in the NFL. I don't know if he's good enough to be a featured player on this defense because the the rest of the linebackers are not very good. You know. There are offense. There are defenses where you play so much, you know, nickel that the two linebackers really have to be able to do multiple things and play very well. I think Camus got high upside. Um, I actually think he'd be better off in a three-four defense as an inside linebacker. That said, um, I know you want to talk about T.J. Edwards. I think this entire linebacker group gets revamped next year. And I think T.J. Edwards and Nathan Gary are the guys to watch. Now, do we agree that Nathan Gary should be that guy? Absolutely not. I think I speak for both of us. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Gary should not be a starter. I he's think fine he's, as a backup. I think he's a good situational player. I think he's a good um, coverage guy. He is abysmal against the run. Yes. And it's shown in droves and, and he makes a lot of mistakes tackling in general yes uh this game against dallas is going to be very yeah. interesting i mean, for him. Run, I, mean I imagine they run at him honestly. i would run he, it i mean because tj edwards is decent and run de- he only pretty much plays on running downs he's gonna have to play more now but. well and i was actually gonna bring this up to you is i wonder if maybe it, the Camus thing wasn't a punishment and that they were just trying to get tj edwards well, ready I mean, that's kind of what doug said but I, I i listen more when it comes to the defensive guys i listen more to Schwartz. he right. called it more like schematic and how they went big personnel a lot and maybe that's believe but they, they deployed duke riley over right like that's where you're like okay i don't know yeah no but, i agree with that but i mean i believe the idea that maybe he's not the best fit against a power team or whatever but he's I don't not know. i don't think this isn't like a blow to their defense it's certain he's a leader like they love him in the locker room like you said i don't think on the field necessarily it's gonna affect them all that much. i agree their defense has been great when he was in there so right, correct. um I mean, but this is going to be like TJ Edwards is one of those guys, whether they win this game or not, over the next two weeks, he's going to kind of how we were talking about with JJ Arcega Whiteside, who we've quickly gone downhill on in terms of our optimism. But uh, he's a guy that over the next two weeks, and he's going to, he can win or lose a starting job next year. Yeah, I agree with they're you. They're not a team that likes to invest in linebackers. So if they can be like, oh, we have this undrafted guy under contract for the next two years, we'll, we'll just make him our featured guy. Like, kind of sounds like Camus Grugier Hill when he got yeah, here. Exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, TJ is a very good run defender for a rookie linebacker. For an undrafted rookie, too. Yeah, yeah um, <laughs> he's a little undersized. I, we really haven't seen him in coverage all that often. I do wonder if they were getting him more snaps last week so that he could prepare for this week when he's well. Even even getting more, he still only had eight snaps last week. It was right. more than Camus, but yeah, I mean that's the, he's he has only played more than thirty percent of the snaps twice. Right, yeah. uh, this, like this he hasn't game, played a huge role yet. This game, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts Especially to die. Zeke, yeah, Aaron, yeah. Aaron Nickel, excuse me, um, because frankly, Nate Gary's been abysmal against. But the they love Gary, though. So. They do, but this yeah. is the playoffs. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's the playoffs. That's true. Um, so, so how do you think? How do you think they go about investing in the linebacker position this offseason? Because they're not a team that's going to draft one high. That's just never going to happen, uh, especially with all the other needs they have. So, do you think they just try and either stumble on another Nigel Bradham? Do you think they make another LJ Fort, Corey Nelson type signing? Like, how do you? Because that's just kind of the method they go. But they might need it more now than they have in the last few years. You know, I, I've been going back and forth about this, and I, I really do wonder if they are willing to find another Nigel because I think that's what they need. They yeah. need a veteran presence. I think Joe Schobert 
from the Browns makes a lot of sense. I also think he's going to command a lot yeah, of that's money. The, that's the issue. I mean, he's a guy that they probably could have traded for at some point. Right. So he's on the block a lot. I think he, he's putting up pretty good numbers this year. His numbers are... Yeah, he made the Pro Bowl a couple yeah, years 100, ago. 116 tackles, two sacks, nine pass deflections, two forced fumbles, four interceptions. Wow. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna make like a Jordan Hicks type contract. Probably. Yeah, and I think I think you can underpay the rest of your linebacker group if you get that one get guy. Get one guy who can lead everybody. That yeah. D'Amico Ryans, that, you know... I guess Takiyah Spikes back in the day, Jeremiah Trot or whatever, but they need one guy who is a legit dog. You know, and you I mean? can call the plays and can do like a little bit of everything. Like, yeah, a smart kid went to Wisconsin. He can tackle well. He can make plays on the ball, similar to Jordan Hicks. Listen, the Eagles were never paying the money that Arizona paid Jordan Hicks. No, so, no, I, no. So when I see people like, oh well, gee golly, they should have re-signed Jordan Hicks. No, it's not. It's not so much that they should have re-signed him as well. He's playing really well. We're right, he, yeah. and he's the one guy who's left that's actually played well. I mean, yeah. Golden Tate's been fine, but yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, it almost it, doesn't feel like he was an eagle. <laughs> it's what's funny is is they're going to get their best comp pick for Nick Foles, who's been just he's benched. Yeah, yeah he's been you know and, for a sixth round pick. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? What a weird, weird year. <laughs> yeah, weird year. I mean, we're sitting here. Eagles are seven and seven, and they're either going to miss the playoffs or win the division right now. Like, like this week is pretty much bananas. Really that. Bananas. I know it's weak. Like that's like I think we talked about this the other day, but. Like if you had said, I mean, we 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 probably said this. Week sixteen is going to decide this division. We the context of it is way different, obviously. Sure. Um, well, I think I saw Jimmy Kemsky tweet this out the other day that they've clinched not being the worst division in the history of like uh, the NFL just by, just by winning last week. Yeah, and so, the Cowboys winning. Yeah, and yeah, Giants so w- actually. Yeah, one team will at least probably be eight and eight. <laughs> at so. least probably. At least probably. Well, unless there's ties, you know what I mean? Like. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, this team has dealt with a lot of injuries. And I think we've been extremely critical of them. But when you really look at all the injuries they've suffered, at least when you compare what you thought, you know, at the beginning of the season of what they had, it's pretty it's pretty incredible that they are still contending. Granted, they're contending in a terrible division. Um, they're still alive. I tweeted out like the list of all the guys that have missed at least three three games this year. Excuse me. The other day, I can't find the tweet. It was it was because yeah, you tweet so much. <laughs> you tweet more than I do. I do not, sir. <laughs> yes, you do. You go on like tweet threads. I don't do that. Uh, that I do. That's fair. <laughs> you're, big, I like, I you're, you're a big tweet thread guy. I'm a tangent guy. I can't find it. Uh, I mean, we can even just like off the top of our heads go through this. Camus. Obviously. So, so you have well, let's, let's go offense, Stephen. So running back Jordan Howard, Darren Sproles, Corey Clement. Uh, I believe that's it, right? Yeah. Nate wide, Sudfeld. I mean, he technically did, but he yeah. wasn't going to play anyway in those games. But uh, wide receiver, also Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, Nelson Aguilar. Mm-hmm. Um, tight end, Alex Ellis. Uh, <laughs> Poor guy. Poor hey, guy. he's back. He's back uh, on the practice They've book. been healthy on the offensive line, actually, which is pretty wild considering that like they're all in the 30s or whatever. Yeah, Jason I mean, Jason Peters. Peters missed three games, I think, or two and a half. Oh, games. no, you're right. Jason, mm, yeah, I think he might have missed. He might have missed three. Uh, so Jason Peters will say uh, Derek Barnett. If he misses this week, will be his third one, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Timmy Jernigan, Malik Jackson. Which a lot of, when I tweeted this out, because I forgot about Malik Jackson a few yeah. ages ago. Uh, let's see. Hassan Ridgeway. Hassan Ridgeway, who is looking pretty good. Uh, linebacker Camus, even before this end, season ending. Thing. Nigel Bradham. Uh, Nigel Bradham at corner. You have Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills. Avante um, Maddox. Avante Maddox. Like, Craymon LeBlanc. We just basically listed almost the entire Yeah, roster. basically the safeties are the only guys. And like, it was like this last year, too. If we went through last year, it would have been similar. Like, right. And so, so this is a good transition to like, so today, Doug kind of like did his, he, he did a, I, I, I actually, I missed the press conference you we were there, but he like did his jokingly, he kind of tongue in cheek made reference to the fact that we're not down on the field. So we don't hear like the bodies crushing against each other. Yeah, he was and trying. I get that it's a violent sport, but at the same time, they have the most injuries in the NFL, I believe, over the last two years. Yeah, I mean it's so, rough. Like, it's just saying it's a violent sport. It's a violent sport. Violent sport. It is also a violent sport. That's correct. <laughs> violent sport. Like that doesn't. I don't know what they need to change something. They need to look into this more deeply. I know they say they do, but like this is just out of control, and a lot of it's foot injuries. Now there's been a few back injuries too. I don't, uh, maybe those you can't control as much, but I don't know. So, I, something. I don't something think it's a matter change. of the injuries. It's a matter yeah, of the yeah. handling of the injuries. Yeah, yeah, that that's fair. Into. I think that like you can't prevent really yeah. – I mean, you can prevent I mean, hamstring may, injuries to yeah. an extent, but like most of these haven't been like 
muscle issue, muscle muscle or hamstring injuries. These have been last year they were, but yeah, this yeah, year this year it's been like broken foot, foots and shoulder. And and, yeah, I mean, like the Jordan Howard ones, one of the weirder ones. Yes, he still hasn't practiced. He didn't practice today. He wasn't out there, right? He was out there, oh, but he was doing limited though. Yes. Yeah. Well, as far as we know, as far, yes. yeah. Uh, my guess is he won't be cleared. If he's cleared, we're not until the end of the week again. So I would put it at highly doubtful. Yeah, that's why the. Yeah, the idea that he was going to come back this week, I, he probably just heard a loud bang. Mike's, Mike's mic is a mess. Is what I would say. Yes. That's how I would describe it. <laughs> yes. Um, we need to look into that. <laughs> but I, so with this, we can we can talk about the running game a little bit. You, you wrote about how, like, Miles Sanders' emergence is going to affect the rotation. Like, it's going to be interesting to see how they figure this out because all of a sudden Miles Sanders is their probably best offensive player. He's their most dynamic. They need to get him the ball as much as possible. He's a threat in the passing game where Jordan Howard isn't. At the same time, Jordan Howard was playing really well before he got hurt. Runs strong, runs forward, short yardage guy. Boston Scott needs to be in the game, I think. He's proven that at least, whether it's five to ten touches or whatever it is. So like how how do you how do you see it playing out? When if if Howard were to come back this week, which we both probably don't think, but if he comes back this week, how do you see it going? Well, I think Miles Sanders the thing with Miles Sanders is, is like you said, he's probably their most dynamic weapon, so you want him on the field as abso- as much as possible. So <coughs> excuse me, um, you're going to probably put him in the slot even when Jordan Howard's out there. You're going to move him around, uh, and he's going to play 40 to 50 snaps. The thing is, from a touch standpoint, he's running the ball so well that you do want to get him, you know, the ball in the backfield. I think the solution is to do a lot of two-back sets, the problem there is chances are you're probably then going to do 22 personnel, so you're only going to have one wide receiver out there, so you're going to have limited downfield action. Whoops, my mic. Um, sorry about that, guys. Uh, so that's going to be a problem. I, I think they're having to figure out ways to be creative with a not very dynamic offensive group and – Miles is the guy that stirs the drink right now, and so you have to keep him on the field, which will then impact Jordan Howard's touches. It will impact Boston Scott's touches. You also don't know if Jordan Howard's in the best football shape. Yeah, he's been able to keep his his feet you know, fresh and his legs fresh, which is great, especially in the playoffs. But as of right now, those first couple of games, they're going to be tough to come back from if he does come back this week or next week. Um, they're getting absolutely nothing out of Jay Ajayi. I would be shocked if he's on the team. If Howard's back, then he's gone. Too. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that that's completely his, fair. His knee is shot, which is unfortunate for him because he was a very talented player before. Yeah, he just um, doesn't have it right now. Yeah, he just doesn't, yeah he doesn't. I don't. He didn't even play the other day, right? Nope. Yeah, not a snap. He dressed, but not a snap. Yeah, um, and he doesn't play special teams, so he's essentially no, a waste. And he's not a pass catcher. So right. Um, well, he showed that clearly. So against how, the Giants. How, Lane wasn't at Lane Johnson wasn't at practice today. Doug was kind of more optimistic about him for the week, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would I would bet just knowing Lane's personality that he plays on Sunday, but this would probably be of the games he could possibly miss that you'd be most concerned about, especially with Demarcus Lawrence potentially going against Big B, who played decently well last week. Uh, but I don't know that that a high ankle sprain is a really serious. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 and yeah, then if he plays. How effective can he be against a freak like that? Yeah, you almost. You, I mean, I think it's a tough one. I think maybe you you keep him active and you start him, and in the second you see something wrong, wrong, maybe you know if he wants to give it a go, do it. But I also think if you lose Lane Johnson and you do make the playoffs, you're putting yourself in a really rough situation. Look, we've seen Big V carry the load in the playoffs and in big games. Um, they need to help him. You know, the right side is a little bit different because you're going to probably have more tight end help, so that helps. But man, I, I just it, it's it's a cannot like it's tough. It's tough to figure that one out. Derek Barnett's the guy who seems like he's ready to return eventually, and he's probably the one that out of the injured guys they probably need the least out of them. Too. Yes, like, like he's good, but for sure. But like they could use Nelson Aguilar more than Barnett right now. Right, and Aguilar, I don't know if he's going to play. He might not play again. This yeah, <laughs> even if they make the playoffs, because um, it just kind of seems like that's where this is headed. Um, Jordan Howard seemingly wants to be out there. He's practicing every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, not saying Nelson doesn't want to be out there. I'm just saying. It's I mean, just, it he, does. I mean, he didn't deny that free agency is in the back of his mind when he was asked about it. So. Well, good man, because you're going to make like two million dollars yeah. at, at most. Yeah. Um, you know, he out of all the, he he might have tanked his value as much as anyone in the NFL for free agency. 
it, from the wide receiver position, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially because it's not a good wide receiver class. Like, he could have made some money. Right, for sure. Like, you look at, like, a dude like Adam Humphreys made a bunch of money this last offseason. So. He could have had, like, a Muhammad Sanu, like, contract when he yeah. signed with the Falcons. He made 10 million a year or, or around what his contract was for his rookie, even a little bit less. Now, he'll probably get a <laughs> one year prove a deal or something, or a two year. That's a, not actually a two year deal kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, he'll probably get a one and one, like you said. I am, I am curious to see where he winds up. Maybe, like, the Colts or something to get. I think he heads out west. Yeah. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see him in Oakland. You know, Gruden kind of really needs wide receivers and wants wide receivers. And he strikes me as a guy who would give a guy like Nelson an opportunity to shine. I could see them getting along really well, too. There's yeah. Just a couple of strange guys. <laughs> yeah. Strange guys in a strange land. Well, they're going to be in Vegas now, actually. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's strange. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the guy that they need back the most is probably Jordan Howard just because you're putting so much on Miles' plate. And even if Jordan's only getting 10 touches, he offers a different element than probably Boston Scott does. But Boston Scott can work in concert with the two of them as well. So I think that that's, Howard is at least an upgrade over him. They get it back. So right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they can open up that spot to bring in another wide receiver potentially yes. like Mark Michelle. So, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think they bring up another wide receiver in this one if, if that's the... You know, I mean, I, look, they have to put through everything they have at this game. It, it is kind of wild. It, I don't know if funny is the right word, but the Probably way not. The, the way well, the way they keep losing players to injuries, and it's at neither of the positions where they have seven players. <laughs> they have seven defensive ends, seven corners. Every other position is getting hurt. Like, well, Derek Barnett's oh, out, like, but yeah, oh, yeah, we don't want to release any of these guys, though. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think when you're looking at it from a roster building standpoint, you invested a fourth round pick in Sharif Miller. You like him moving forward. You want to develop him. You well, then they're not playing Gennard Avery though. Right. Well, I mean, he played a little bit the other day, and he was used absolutely terribly. Like it didn't even make sense. They had him rushing from the inside as a down linebacker or, or as a down end. Didn't he get a penalty at one point too? He did. Yeah, yeah. he was in he neutral played zone. Four snaps. So he yeah, gets more than zero. So. And I watched all four of those snaps, and all four of them were poorly executed and poorly it's, it's, used. It's so weird. So so he played ten snaps in week eleven. Uh, and that's I think that's kind of when we were talking about how he like showed some flashes and all that. Then he's gone two five zero four. Like fun so, day, and, and it was after that where Jim Schwartz like how excited he is to like because he's a guy that you can use at different spots, standing up, going down. Mm-hmm. They traded a twenty twenty one fourth for him. And we they, should we should mention, and a lot of people haven't mentioned this. He is playing a lot, he's of, special a lot of special teams. teams yeah. yeah, like but they didn't get him for special teams. <laughs> oh well, I mean maybe they did. Who knows? Uh, if they did. Then, then that, that, that trade looks worse then. <laughs> right. But we also don't know that yeah. they did. Yeah. So, um, it's like in theory, Deshaun Hall would be a guy who could cut, but they're playing Deshaun Hall. They're not playing Avery. So then why would you do that? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's a weird situation. And I think corner's interesting, right? Because you're not going to outright cut Sidney Jones. No, nah, you can't. You just can't. I mean, even if you get rid of him in the offseason, whatever, but like you don't want to cut him and then Ronald Darby yeah. suffers a season ending foot injury. And then Craig James has been their best special teams. Player. Yeah, by a mile actually. Yeah. And um that's what I was getting to is like yeah. special teams if you're going to put a focus on it, you have to really p- emphasize it. And you know guys like Craig James, guys like Duke Riley, Alex Singleton, um Boston Scott so on and so forth. Those guys are contributing on special teams and, and Greg that's Ward an, as a returner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, that's I think that's important, and that's why you're not seeing so much roster movement. That said, though, JJ doesn't play special teams. Also, Kyle. also losing losing Camus does hurt special teams. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah n- maybe not as much as it would have like a year. Yeah, because I think Duke Riley is a kind of that role is probably that replacement guy for him. yeah. And and so that trade looks a little better in retrospect than if Duke Riley. Can I actually think the Duke Riley trade is going to come off significantly well, I mean, they got better. A better draft pick out of it, yeah. Yeah, it's going to come off significantly better than the Gerard Avery, tra- Avery trade when we mm. really re-examine these trades in the off season. Interesting. All right, uh, here we'll, we'll end up. We got a bunch of comments on our post game pod. We'll read some of them off. One more reminder: sign up for Eagles Extra. You can get some tech messages from Mike K, which I know you guys have all dreamed about for years. Hey, you know what? <laughs> if you want them, I'll supply them. We do like unlimited AMAs too. Like you yeah, can no, ask me as many fun. questions. Yeah. yeah, I mean we got, we got we've taken questions from people as we went in the press conferences, and you know we're we're gonna keep on doing that. So just keep on just sign up. That's what keep we're on asking. Keeping just on. Keep on keeping on, and then sign up. <laughs> All right, uh, Jace move one zero one five five one two. 
wide receiver, QB, DB position coaches that all be fired and replaced. I don't care by who at this point. You, you can literally replace them with anybody and he'd be fine with it. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. I'm less convinced that they fire like Corey Unlin, but we'll see. They call that the Mac Hollins effect. <laughs> uh, you can replace him with anybody. Looks like there's some intense discussion about this comment. I'm not going to read all the replies, but it says if Jordan Howard isn't asking for much, why wouldn't we resign him? Guys, a chain mover that defenses do not want to have to tackle. Patient, smart, and physical, not to mention a two time pro bowler. It's a no brainer. I think you and I both said if they can get him at a cheap deal. Yeah, I, I said I that they made him expendable. Yeah. That's that's different yeah, than they saying don't, they don't need him now, but it would be nice to have him. Right, yeah. yeah. And but I and you know what, given the model of this team, I don't ex- I expect them to I, I expect them to lowball him and he will want to go seek yeah. something else. Yeah, that's I I don't think he'll be I, it's funny, a few weeks ago we said they have to bring him back, and now we're like, yeah, they, they can afford to lose him. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it is funny. Things they, change, yeah. Yeah, things change. I mean, I think the shoulder injury is definitely concerning. Like, you have if you don't see what he ha- – I mean, you would know the injury better than anybody else. I just – to me, you're in a, it's kind of a similar situation to a Jai where it's like, you know, you know you can have him, so why pay him? Yeah, that, that, that contract – it's kind of funny in retrospect, the Jai one where they have the option to keep him next year. Like, why would they keep him next year? Well, I wonder, that, I wonder but, who would decide one of that. But that's why you keep that option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he just blew in case up, he's good, you know? yeah. But it's just, <laughs> I'm curious, like, whose idea that was. Uh, our friends Jamie and Candace Palmer, who sent us a text the message. The They sent us a text message last night, actually. I responded to them this morning. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So follow Jamie and Candace's lead because we're big fans of them. We signed up. Can't wait for the updates. Miles Sanders will be coming every down back for sure. I think we can take Dallas, but our defense has to wake back up. They also said thanks, guys. They also said thanks, guys. Come on, Zach. Come on. (laughs) That was just like a personal message for us. If you're going to commit to it, commit to it. That was a personal message for us, you know? Mm. Uh, Let's see. Goat Stature says it's not Schwartz. The DBs literally look like flailing fish trying to deflect a pass. Pitiful. Shaking my damn head. Flailing fish, huh? (laughs) Fair enough. Uh, Oh, God. PFSIF says, all rise. The Church of Carson is now in session. Blessed be the name of Carson. (laughs) Okay, then. (laughs) Okay. That's that's all you got? (laughs) Okay, then. Uh, Okay. Bradley Shy says, why Jay again touches you better than all of our running backs? I just wanted to hear you read that out loud first. Not true. Number two, he's basically playing on one knee. That's your reason. (laughs) Yeah, he's not good. Skyler Skyler Allen, Greg Ward, needs to be the starting slot receiver in 2020. I mean, if he keeps playing like the way he did, it's not like outlandish idea. I still think they go and get some guys. But, I mean, if he keeps on this trajectory where he's like a playmaker, like they have to bring him back. So. Well, yeah, he'll be back and he'll compete in training I imagine he's under contract probably, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, though. I think they learned from this year that they just can't go with what is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah, have you to have compete. bring in talent. Bring guys to compete with him that yeah. are worthy of competing with him as opposed to guys that were here. Continue to push to be better. Yeah. Uh... See, what? I don't know what that means. Uh, here we go. Laser eighty. Ertz, Goddard, Perkins, Ward, Sanders, and Scott may provide the firepower to blow the cowgirls out of the water. It's pretty funny that we've reached the point where Josh Perkins, Greg Ward, and Boston Scott are a part of that statement. But I mean, they've looked better. Than what a band of there. heroes those guys <laughs> must be! I don't think Perkins got a catch this last game, though, did he? He did not. Yeah. He wasn't targeted. Uh, the little penguin. I think we've gotten comment from him before. I actually went to this game and made it. That's why I have this opinion. But I thought that was one of our better looking games. Everyone is saying that we had a bad game, but I don't know. I thought Carson had a great game. Tight ends did pretty good. Sanders was great, and Ward was a surprise. I mean, it was good at the end, but it was still bad in the beginning. Yeah, I think a lot of people think that we're very negative when it's actually just you that's negative. Like that's not <laughs> like no, I'm just kidding. Um, look, I mean, they, I mean, they played two bad teams, and they weren't great in either of them. Right. I think. I think they did some great things. I don't think they had great performances. And so you have to also take it... You have to take the good with the bad. You have to criticize both. Because they're facts. That is what it is. I think Carson. Only. I think Carson Wentz missed some throws in that game. But I would say that was one of the top six performances of his career. At at worst. I'm nodding my head, yes. Yeah. He's, Zach is nodding his head. <laughs> Edward I, Chamberlain says, y'all be hating, by the way. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, I want to address that. <laughs> you uh, specifically want to talk, talk to Ed. Say Ed. Hey, Ed. <laughs> Edward. Edward. My man. Mr. Chamberlain. Mr. C. Uh, you know, I don't really see us as hating. I, I actually think this is a – I think this game's going to be very close. Do I think Dallas wins? Yes. Because I don't like what I see on defense. And 
the Cowboys, frankly, have four wide receivers who are significantly better than all four, or all three, I should say, of the Eagles wide receivers. Yeah, yeah they only have three. <laughs> Not to mention they have a great running game. In, it, it, and Tony Pollard is kind of like Yeah, a, so, but I mean, Tony yeah. Pollard is kind of like a low-rent Miles Sanders, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, low rent, that's not fair. Uh, a poor man's... I, yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's an interesting player, and he, yeah. he's the kind of guy that's given the Eagles He's dynamic. The yeah. they, this Eagles team needs guys to step up. You know, only one wide receiver caught a pass last week. That is alarming. That is not good. You know, Zach Ertz can only do so much. Pro Bowler, by the way. Um, Dallas Goddard uh, has a two-game touchdown streak against the Cowboys. He's hoping to make it a third one this week. Somebody to keep an eye on. Uh, not the channel, but your actual eye on is Zach Ertz could actually break Jason Witten's record for the most receptions by a tight end through the first seven seasons of their career. That's pretty significant. Uh, he's only three away. I mean, so he's not only breaking Witten's record, he's doing it more than anyone in the history of the league at the tight end position. I think that's really interesting. There's a lot to like about this Eagles team, I think. That said, I think Dallas also has a lot to like as well. All right, you said a lot to Edward there. Ed, <laughs> my guy. Drew Christensen said, "I feel that with our injuries, we're undermanned." This is this is something that a lot of people have been saying. This is the game we need to pull out all the stops. Would love to see the Eagles run Greg Ward on a jet sweep and use his QB ability to throw off of it. The Cowboys are talented, but not very disciplined. A lot of people <laughs> have been like begging the Eagles to do a trick play. So, I mean, if they're ever gonna, this is the where you, this is the game where you throw the kitchen sink. So they got to do it. Doug has to pull out his most creative stuff this week. People want the legend of Greg Ward to grow. I, I get know. it. I, c- could it grow anymore? I don't know. Huh. <laughs> All right. Well, we can end on that note. Um, again, sign up for Eagles Extra. Any last thoughts, Mike, before we go? Yeah. Um, I think this is a game where if the Eagles can get back to stopping the run – not only do they have a great chance of winning this game, I think they can turn the tide because I think a one-dimensional Dak Prescott is a bad Dak Prescott um, in a one-dimensional offense. I also think Jason Garrett, when he is one-dimensional, has a really tough time making smart decisions. Look, Dallas has got the Eagles number right now. They've won four straight games against the Eagles. It's time for Carson Wentz to you know, have you know, the Giants-Redskins performance against a team that actually has a 500 record, and I think he's up for the challenge. The guys around him need to step up as well. All right, we'll end on that note. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. As always, please write us some reviews, preferably five stars. Uh, leave us some comments, and we'll catch you guys in our preview pod later in the week.